with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. I am Sherry Shaw, Deacon and Minister of Music at Iowa State Lutheran Church in Gate Harbor, Washington. On behalf of the whole community of Iowa State, thank you for being part of our worship this morning. Our building may be closed, but the church is always open. Our worship bulletin with the order of service may be downloaded. The link is located in the box below the video that you're watching under Show More. Today we remember in prayer and sat with prayers of thanksgiving for test results that show that she is in remission. For Connie Hummel's friend Karen, who is experiencing serious kidney problems and will have surgery this week. We pray for healing for Karen. We pray for the family of Barbara Gates as they gather this afternoon for a small family memorial service. We pray for peace and comfort for Sally Middleton, Ashley Ortenzo, and their families as they remember Barbara. Today, we welcome David Dewey, President of Lutheran Community Services Northwest, as our guest preacher. Several years ago, our participation in hosting a refugee family was facilitated by Lutheran Community Services Northwest. Welcome, David. Next Sunday, we are excited to welcome Pastor Seth back following his sabbatical. We look forward to seeing him and working together again. I invite you to turn to your bulletin as we continue our worship with the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord. 
and guide me along right pathways for name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from Philippians 4 in chapter 4. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Julia and I urge some text of to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Glenn and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look! I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murders, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Reading the Gospel today was Karen Huffman, who is the Chief Financial Officer of Lutheran Community Services Northwest. We have the rare blessing of having a CFO who not only has a CPA, but was a graduate of Trinity Lutheran Seminary. Good morning, my name is David Dewey, and I am the President and CEO of Lutheran Community Services Northwest. My wife, Jean, and I wish I could join you in person today because Gig Harbor has been our home for over 30 years, and we love visiting on this day. To summarize the point of the parable of the wedding feast, God sent his son into the world, and the very people who should have celebrated his coming rejected him, bringing judgment upon themselves as a result 
the The kingdom kingdom of of heaven heaven was opened up to anyone who would set aside their own righteousness and by faith accept the righteousness God provided in Jesus. I was very pleased to open your website and see all of your smiling faces holding a sign that said, You are welcome here. That has been our mantra at Lutheran Community Services for almost 100 years. We are experts at welcoming the stranger. From Spokane to Seattle, Portland to Klamath Falls, Boise to the Tri-Cities, and many places in between, including Gay Harbor, LCS Northwest welcomes the stranger and cares for over 40,000 people a year. Today, I want to focus on two programs that are in your backyard. The first is Refugee Resettlement. You have helped us welcome over 45,000 children of God from around the world to start a new home in the Northwest. Let me repeat that. You have helped us welcome over 45,000 children of God from around the world to start a new home in the Northwest. I want to show you a quick little video clip so you can see some of their faces. For refugees and immigrants, a single plate or eating alone is equal to isolation. Isolation is the most threatening aspect of leaving their homeland behind and rebuilding a life in the United States. At Lutheran Community Services Northwest, we witness the enormous challenges of learning English, of supporting a family, of children assimilating quickly and leaving parents behind. But But during during difficult and uncertain uncertain times, how do families cope? All over the world, families come come together at mealtime and and they share. At the Community Community Services Northwest, we set the the table table for refugee families by giving them the emotional and practical support they need to rebuild their lives. Through the pandemic and all the other barriers to integration, we are there. As you know, it is a very difficult time for our refugee and immigration services. We as a country have not been very welcoming lately. But take heart. I believe we will be a welcoming nation again very soon. God has other plans. No one has been harder hit by the pandemic than our seniors. We were already seeing record numbers of depression and feeling of isolation by our seniors, and then COVID-19 hit. Again, take heart. We have put on our protective gear and dropped supplies at their doors. And pretty soon, Santa will also be making a visit to our seniors from a safe distance. Please take a look at our Stand for Seniors program and really look into the seniors' eyes. Dear Santa, I know it's been a long time since I've written. Can I ask you a favor? I know many seniors who could use a bit of joy and cheer. Most people do not realize the number of people that truly are alone. And then if you are impaired, a shut-in, you become more and more isolated. The depression and the aloneness can be even worse during the holidays. So, Santa, could you please help? Now I gotta hop up on the roof, check with Rudolph, make sure that everything's okay, my sleigh is ready for the upcoming event. Merry Christmas! This is so much fun, bringing joy to our isolated seniors in our community. It takes a lot of preparation to make it happen. The volunteer groups come in and they put the bags together for us. And and then we partner up with other groups within the community and we give the gift bags out. Volunteer last year and saw what an impact it played on these people's lives that are really the forgotten ones in our society. 
Santa for Seniors is a program through Lutheran Community Services. It helps to acknowledge and honor our seniors during the holiday times. We partner with low-income housing, food banks that support seniors on specific days, nursing homes. The Santa Parade is put on by the 6th Business District, and it is a community event. Center for Seniors wanted to be a part of that. Are you already a senior? So that we could help to foster that there's different things that you can do to help support our seniors during the holidays. This is a great opportunity to bridge the gap between generations and really bring the community together and take care of our seniors. seniors tell me uh, when they received their gift bag that this is often the only thing that they'll receive this year. They might have family in the area, but they're pretty much left alone. One senior told us that uh, it's been seven years since she had even celebrated Christmas. We'll get a lot of hugs, we'll see some tears, but overall it's just the joy of being a part of this evening again. I cannot emphasize how much this truly means and how much it brightens a person's life. Well, I guess you would say this is a labor of love. Um, to see the impact that just a simple gift makes to these forgotten seniors. How can you help? You can volunteer, you can host an item drive, or you can donate. And this will bring joy to our isolated seniors in our community. Did you see the joy in some of those faces? some of our saints slash seniors. I've witnessed it, these isolated seniors, when we visit and there's a sense of hope and wonder that comes back because they haven't been forgotten. Center for Seniors is just one of the programs we provide to make sure seniors are not forgotten. During this pandemic, the demand for our Meals on Wheels program has more than doubled. So we are continuing to remember our isolated seniors and all of the work we do at Lutheran uh, it is really because of folks like you. And so I want to thank you for welcoming us, welcoming our services into your community. Now I want to close with a prayer uh, that has meant a lot to me over the years that I've been with Lutheran. And uh, I want to challenge you to be a little bit interactive. I know you're sitting on your comfy couch or a chair and having your coffee, but I want us to get a little Baptist. And, and after, I want this to be interactive. Uh, uh, and I'll be at home watching at the same time as you. So I'll be listening to see if I can hear some loud amens. But here's the closing prayer, and it's more of a challenge to all of us. Uh, and you'll know when you can pitch in. May God bless us with the restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that we may seek truth, truth boldly, and in love wholeheartedly. Amen? Amen. May God bless us with a holy anger, that's right, a holy anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people, so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. Amen? Amen. May God bless us with tears to shed with, and for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, grief of war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. Amen? Amen. 
This is one of my favorite. May God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we really can make a difference in this world so that we are able, with God's grace and help, to do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all, to heal, serve, love, and reconcile. Amen? Amen. And the blessing of God, our loving Creator, Jesus Christ, our Brother and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our Advocate and Guide, be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Now to our hymn of the day. grace and mercy. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, Protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding, so that justice and peace prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, 
Let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, especially those who may silently or loud. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who set to their knees. Lord, hear your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministers that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, you are prayer. Gracious host, we give thanks for this time of sabbatical rest for Pastor Seth. We rejoice and celebrate his gifts of ministry as we welcome him back into our community of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and inform in your loving arms all whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we individually prepare the elements for Holy Communion in our homes, we give thanks to each of you who have contributed to the ministry of God you say with your tithes and offerings. Thank you for your generosity. Please join me in helping our ministry be sustained and grow by following the link in the video description to donate your gift now. Even though we cannot gather physically, we can still offer our gifts together to do God's work. into a time of communion together. Before we do, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for welcoming me, welcoming me into your congregation and your community for these past few months while Pastor Seth has been on sabbatical. 
It's been so much fun to get to know you, get to worship with you and preach for you and be in your Bible study and get to know your wonderful staff. I've just really enjoyed spending time with the community at August Day. And thank you for welcoming me and uh, for worshiping with me in this time. And I hope to see you again soon. Now, for communion, if you're receiving, if you're planning to receive the sacrament today, make sure that you have some kind of bread or cracker and wine or juice ready to go. If you're not receiving communion today, please make sure you join in praying the Eucharistic prayer as found in your bulletin, as together we all welcome the presence of Jesus into our hearts and our homes this day. Let us pray. Blessed are you, compassionate and faithful God, and how wonderful the work of your hands. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own, and filled them with longing for a peace that would last, and for a justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From them you raised up Jesus, the living bread, in whom ancient hungers were satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, yet death would hunt him down. With a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirit. Loving God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over our earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with the women and men he loved, he took bread and praised you, God of all creation. He blessed and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. When supper was ended, he poured a final cup of wine and blessed you, God of all creation. He passed the cup among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the cup of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins will be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Ever gentle God, we remember Jesus, your Son, Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in a spirit of holiness and exalted him as the first of creation. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in love, and faithful to the breaking of the bread. Rejoicing in the Holy Spirit, your whole church offers thanks and praise with all your servants whose lives bring hope to this world. Awaken to the undying light of pardon and peace those who have fallen asleep in faith. Gather them all into communion with all your saints. Then at last will all creation be one, and all divisions healed. And we shall join in singing your praise through Jesus Christ's eternal word. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, all loving God, now and forever. Amen. Together let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you are not receiving communion today, receive this blessing. May the God who sets a bountiful feast for us all and promises to deliver us from all evil, strengthen and encourage you in all that you do. And may you know Christ's presence with you always. Amen. If you are receiving communion today, receive this promise. This is the body of Christ given for you.
this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and always. Amen.